Well, Israel is facing the prospect of Syria-based militants attacking across its northern border with the backing of Assad's regime. A Palestinian armed group reportedly says it's been given the green light by Damascus to carry out raids from the Golan Heights, which is over here. It's apparently part of Syria's response to a series of Israeli airstrikes on the territory over the weekend. And Syrian missile batteries have also been pointed at Israel, ready to retaliate immediately in case of a new attack. In neighboring Lebanon, combined Syrian-Lebanese units are reportedly on standby. Let's now get more reaction from Eric Margolis's war correspondent, columnist and author. Eric, well, clearly Israel's put itself in even more of a precarious position with its actions with those airstrikes. Uh, as I was just saying, RT has now been hearing from the Free Syrian Army saying that they are ready to point their guns towards Israel. Let's have a listen and then I'd like to get your comments on this development. Of course, we won't side with the regime, but we won't side with Israel either, which is a traditional enemy of our country. But I want to stress that if Israeli strikes are aimed at destroying Syria's infrastructure, we will stand with the regime. If Israel's target is the Syrian people, we will stand with the regime. Is that the sort of response Israel was expecting from the Free Syrian Army, Eric? Uh, probably not, but I don't think they were expecting cheers either, because uh, the, the, the so-called Free Syrian Army are uh, very strong militants. Uh, they're certainly very anti-Israel. In fact, they're more anti-Israel than the Syrian government people are. But uh, these groups are just uh, uh, lightly armed Rambos running around. Uh, they pose absolutely no military threat to Israel at but, all. But one may have thought that those Israeli airstrikes would have helped the rebels. Well, we have to see. Uh, not yet. But uh, do they mark the beginning of the Israeli, mighty Israeli Air Force acting as the Air Force for the, the, the Syrian revolution? It's possible. And, de and destroying President Assad's Air Force, which is playing a key role in keeping him in power, and his armor. Uh, if it does do this, if it launches more attacks, uh, we can conclude that Israel is doing either it, either at the behest of the United States in conjunction with uh, whatever the case, it's become a major player in the war, and it will probably overthrow the Assad regime. If it can, it certainly has the capability. So the message it's been putting across, of course, it was acting in self-defense because of that threat of Hezbollah receiving those weaponry, uh, those weapons from Iran via Syria. Uh, you're saying that's actually more to Israel's agenda than self-defense? Oh, much more. Uh, it's made a big deal about these missiles. And Israel has a legitimate concern about these missiles. It was showered hundreds and hundreds of them back in uh, the last war in 2006. But uh, the point is Israel is taking a very aggressive uh, forward policy here. Uh, the, and this may mark either Israel's entry into the war in Syria uh, or round three or four of Israel's attempt to crush the Hezbollah movement in Lebanon, because there's been a lot of open discussion about that. So, so in effect, in danger of igniting a regional conflict now? Yes, quite right. Uh, the war is certainly spilling over into Lebanon and into Iraq. Uh, it has everybody here. There are over 4 million internal and external refugees in Syria. Syria is turning into another Iraq. Uh, it's a terrible situation. I covered the Lebanese civil war from uh, that went on from 1975 to, two, uh, to 2000. Uh, and I'm sorry, to 1990. And uh, it was it was a, a absolutely nightmarish situation where the whole country broke up into little feuding cantons and militias and gangs, and nobody knew who was in charge of what. And this is happening in Syria. All right, just briefly, I'm here in Moscow. John Kerry, U.S. Secretary of State, he's just been here talking to Vladimir Putin. What do you make of the meeting tonight? They, they seem to be cooperative. Uh, they now talking about that big meeting in a month's time, uh, the, the Geneva meeting. Do you think that the two sides obviously are united over this now and could actually get all parties to start talking as, and that's their aim? Do, do, do you think this has been a successful meeting in Moscow today? 
Well, it's a successful, it's a good first step. You know, uh, uh, Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov has been rightly urging uh, a peace conference and a resolution of this war by, by negotiation for many, many months now, over well over a year. Uh, however, uh, there is very strong sentiment in the U.S. and the Republican Party wants to attack Syria, wants another uh, military operation. And I don't know why they have to wait for a month for this peace conference. Syria is burning. The region is burning. They ought to get at it tomorrow. Eric, thank you very much indeed for your thoughts. Always good to talk to you. Eric Margolis joining us live there, war correspondent, columnist and author.